guys, just welcome back to the Sam Oster Rig Channel. Um, today on episode number one, we've got we've got Sammy lifting up his singlet. So I'll just show you that that right now, guys. Lift up your singlet, mate. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um. Do a trick. Do a trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon? I would. Yeah. Here with Override Seeker. <laughs> About to start our second hit of the week, or my second hit of the week. It's gonna pop my arm. I think um, Tennis what's Integrity Unit need to look into this guy. He's looking a bit too jacked. What's conditioning? Yeah. Bit of, bit of hair loss, bit of muscle, gro <laughs> bit of muscle growth. <laughs> that means he's on something for Acne. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Tree jaw. <laughs> um, I just got told he got AOQs Wildy. How's it feel, mate? That's feeling well, guys. That's feeling well. You can now fund him and his girlfriend to travel. Come on. Absolutely. Bring it. Day one with my cousin Josh. Uh, it's raining today, so I'm going to try and spend $250 at the uh, AO shop. We get that as a player. So, just ate a lot of food. It's going to be a big day just eating. It's currently pouring. No matches have started at all. It's going to be a long day at the tennis. I'm going to try and use and abuse all the uh, perks of being at the Australian Open. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you around the AO store. Night before Adelaide International, 250, playing second on tomorrow. Dana is playing first round qualities Aussie Open. Huge day for both of us. I reckon we're both ready, we're both pumped. Win or lose, I mean, we're gonna, be, we're gonna enjoy it. We're gonna play with no, without fear. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. It's a tournament that did the laundry for you. Um, I'm a little bit behind on laundry and it's gonna have to wait a day and cost a bit. So I uh, am just doing a little bit of hand washing here, just squeezing out my wristbands, drying them out. And I just had a moment of pride. A few people are gonna laugh at this one, but this ladies and gentlemen right here, these are special, you know why? Here's the hand-me-downs, second-hand socks. You know who they're hand-me-downs from? None other than Adam Taylor. Anyone that knows the Taylor Brothers knows that it's a special day when you're getting us hand-me-downs from one of the Taylor Brothers. Um, admittedly, admitted, admittedly, I uh, was chasing a pair of navy socks, and they're navy, and for some reason, he's getting a bit arrogant on us, he's throwing them out um, before they even got holes in them. And uh, for those of you who don't know Adam Taylor, it is comical because they are usually the ones that like receiving the hand-me-downs and aren't shy to um, ask for hand-me-downs, even not only in the form of clothing, but sometimes second-hand grips. And uh, I love their um, audacity and lack of shame uh, because we all got to save money where we can. And um, so he's actually going to be my match socks for tomorrow. I wear two pairs of socks in each, fo each foot. He's going to go over the top to match my navy shirt. Uh, there's something ritualistic about the night before a match. I like to get all my stuff out of my tennis bag, my duffel bag, sort through it, make sure I'm prepared for whatever comes my way. I think my mum would be pretty proud, to be honest. She's always on my back about being messy, so. Mum, if you're watching this, your hard work's paid off. So I've got all my clothes here, thanks to Lululemon, providing probably the most comfortable clothing I've ever worn in my life. Got about four pairs of shorts there, four shirts. Um, a few undies, hats, plenty of socks. I use double socks in my matches, just feel super comfy. And now to the good stuff. Stuff that helps me get through those big three set matches. Um, controversially, a bit of salt. People probably don't realize that um, you need salt to actually hydrate you. Um, I don't know, it's, we've probably been taught a little bit differently when we're younger that salt makes you dehydrated, but yeah, a little bit of salt, um, you need that to actually hydrate you. So I've got some good quality salt here, some creatine, not that this is um, needed for a match and specifically, but I use this every day just to put a bit of weight on because I really struggle uh, to put weight on. Dr. Hydrate, look at the list of ingredients there. That is just magnificent, aesthetically pleasing bottle. Tastes unbelievable. 
Um, we've got a bit of SIS stuff here, so the National Academy got a bit of caffeine um, in case, I don't know, I'm not sure that my uh, concentration and focus and motivation will lapse at Aussie Open, but you never know, a bit of caffeine can't hurt. Um, but yeah, obviously got the rackets in there, all the stencil and string and grips ready for battle. Um, great innovation from Aussie Open providing these bottles. They're actually not using any um, reusable or well, non-reusable plastics, so I think that's awesome. Um, but yeah, that's just a little little run through of what I put in my bag. Um, but yeah, I love the uh, kind of the feeling of just getting ready for battle. Um, and yeah, I'm not usually the most tidy and prepared guy, but when it comes to tennis, I think uh, I think I switch it on a bit. I'm up against Matteo Gigante tomorrow. First on, 10 a.m., Key Arena. Um, not really sure about this guy at all. I've never seen him play. I've heard a little about him about from a few guys that have played him. Asked a couple Aussie guys. Little lefty dude. Um, been climbing up the rankings pretty quick recently, so I'm sure, as everyone is in this draw, he's a handy player. Um... Yeah, feeling feeling pretty good. I've I've noticed a bit of a. Uh, I've been a bit more emotional and a bit more reactive on court, and I've noticed the negative emotions have been coming up a bit more frequently and a bit more aggressively. I'd say. Um, uh, probably comes from a place of just worrying about the result, a bit of self doubt. Um, I, you know, put in a lot of training, but still I feel a bit underdone match-wise. And especially like coming off that 6-3, 6 love against Barrer. Um, not that I want to look into that match too much because he did kind of kind of take my match out of, the, out of my hands a little bit, but I would have loved to get a bit more match time and because, um, you know, I haven't, hadn't played a match before that for six weeks. And, you know, you can train all you want and do all the practice sets you want, but you can't re replicate that match, that real match time. So I think... Yeah, I think the um, the emotional reactivity is coming from a place of um, expectation, for sure, as it basically always is. Uh, I had a little moment on the court a few, couple of days ago. Um, I just felt myself getting super angry and worrying about how I was hitting the ball so much, which was, I don't know, you never want to do that, but it was also great because it uh, kind of humbled me in a weird way and showed me that I'm just worrying way too much. I'm just, um, I've got to realise that I'm playing Australian Open. It's an awesome achievement just to play that and just to be out here. Um, and, you know, all I can do is just test my skills and got to remind myself that it's, it's, it's the big picture. And I think as tennis players and humans in general, we can worry about the next moment so much. Um, but, yeah, you know, tennis players, tennis players peak at... 27, 28, according to the statistics. That's where most of the top 100 guys, that's what their age is. So I just got to make sure I'm playing the tennis that's going to make me the best tennis player. And uh, um, and that's going to, you know, that's going to give me the best chance. So I think having that little moment on the courts made me realise that my I was worrying a bit too much about things that are kind of out of my control. And it's helped me refocus and kind of relinquish a little bit of expectation and in the last couple of sessions after that session I've had that little bit more playful kind of mood where I'm taking it less seriously but uh, also still really focused and uh, not, not so worried and anxious about every little miss and every little error. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm ready for battle and I'm really, really looking forward just to testing my skills against this guy and He's gonna make it a hard battle, and I'm gonna make it a hard battle for him. So I'm really looking forward to it. Let's 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 see what happens. Vamos. Vamos. Yeah. Yes.
to the guy. Just get it done. No, just get it done. Get the band aid off. Alright, what's the time run? Okay, I'll do the So happy to get my first round win at AO against Gigante. It's about six hours since I played. I mean, coming off last week in Brisbane, I was just really happy to play a good level. Um, I feel like last week kind of took the match out of my hands, didn't really didn't really get a feel for the match time again, so it was really good today to come out and you know perform perform at a good level. Um, it was neck and neck first set. We couldn't really get into each other's service games at all, which is pretty pretty rare for two guys about five foot eight. I'm not five foot eight. I'll tell myself I am. I'm a short short five eight. But yeah, he had, he had an unreal serve, really good backhand. I think I did a really good job of uh, getting it to his forehand. He didn't particularly like it going um, when I went hard into his forehand. I thought I was getting um, kind of short responses there and I was able to kind of take over the point. But yeah, absolutely neck and neck first set. Really kind of clutched to, to get that out in the tie break. Um, you know, it's absolutely crucial to kind of take that those first sets, especially in, when they're so tight like that. Um, you know, I did a super good job to kind of keep momentum, broke first game. I kind of saw him dwindling a little bit mentally. Um, but to his credit, um, yeah, I broke first game. I kind of saw his head kind of go down and that in a weird way, I, I knew I was kind of on top of him, but in a weird way, you know, he kind of could, he kind of just started swinging a bit more free and I started tightening up. I could start to see the finish line and, you know, if you kind of get up too love and maybe a double break, then that's probably, probably put it to bed. So I was confused as kind of the end was near. Yeah. And that kind of made me get a bit tight and play a bit passive. There's a few short balls I was starting to hesitate on. and um, I felt that in the tight moments, it wasn't necessarily that I wasn't going for enough. I just noticed that my shot selection started to get a yeah. little bit more clouded and I was a bit more hesitant as to what to do with each shot, whereas before um, I was up a set and a break, I was kind of pretty pretty clear as, as to what I was doing with each shot. Um, so I noticed that a lot. Definitely could have been a bit more, a bit better at yeah, dealing dealing with the start of those service games when I was up a, I was up a break three times actually in the second set. I was like one love break, got back to one all, two one break, got back to two all, three two break, got back to three all. Um, credit to myself for just yeah staying composed. I think I did a really good job. I was battling with a lot of you know, it was pretty stressful out there. You know, you're playing in front of a crowd. And you you want to do well and it's Australian Open and I guess you're playing for what was I playing for maybe fourteen grand today. Not that I was really thinking about that, but I guess it's probably in the back of the mind somewhere. Um, so yeah, I did a really good job, especially with three all, like I was playing some loose, pretty loose service games. So I did a, did a good job as getting back on track and, and managed to hold a couple of times. You know, he, he was starting to, um, really start to fight hard and compete really well. Um, I thought his backhand was very good. Forehand was good. He, he, he moved me around the court, but I felt like that was a side maybe that was giving me a bit more opportunity to attack. Um, but yeah, I think the backhand cross rallies, uh, backhand cross to his forehand was, was working in my favour and that's kind of my favourite shots. I think it was a kind of good match up from the ground in that sense. But far out, he had a super good serve for his heart. Really hard to read and he could, not typical lefty, he could, um, he could flatten it out really well and had a, had a big second serve, but that did cost him at times. I think five or 30 all. He hit a few double faults, but that's going to happen, you know, if you're hitting your, serve, your second serve pretty big. Uh, paid off for him a lot of times, but um, yeah, I think 5 or 30 all gave me a double, and then I scrapped 30 40 and put up a lob, and he missed a smash. And for once in the second set, I actually held up the break. And so, um, big, big feeling of relief for sure. That was probably the most predominant feeling after that result. Um, but yeah, I'm just, just happy to happy to come off the quarter winner but the job is definitely not done i'm not here to lose second round qualities i'm here to here to qualify and, and do better so um next opponent luca nardi another italian um super talented player big serve big forehand he's gonna gonna test test my skills for sure but i'm i'm really looking forward to it and feeling feeling a bit more confident now after after a win so 
Um, but yeah, that, that'll be on Thursday. It's, it's Tuesday now, so I have a day off. I'll uh, have a light hit tomorrow and probably throw some serves down. Serve was, felt like I was not quite getting on top of my serve. Felt like it was kind of traveling through the air a little bit flat and didn't have that downward trajectory, which maybe I was missing a few long. Um, so I'll probably work on a little bit on that tomorrow. I don't want to go too hard. I don't want to cook my shoulder. But yeah, Callum's coming tomorrow, so life on the tour will be reunited, which would be cool. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome having my sister and cousin and obviously my dad as my coach here. It's been it's been an awesome experience so far. And Australian Open, it's uh, it never fails to amaze me how much work they put in. And every year they're you know so innov- innovative with what they're coming up with and making it bigger and better every year. So yeah, I'm um, really excited to start AO with a win and uh, keen to get out there again. I'm also. What what's, what's the secret, mate? Uh, rice, mate. <laughs> rice and curry. <laughs> End of a bittersweet day. Couldn't get the W. Tough pill to swallow. Not bringing my best level, that's for sure. But it happens. You gotta take the positives out of it. Played average and still could have beaten the guys that are 40 in the world. It was fun to have this guy on the sideline and be back uh, in January. January. <laughs> the creds around the neck. How good. Time to fly to Melbourne tomorrow and uh, go look, lock in to watch Dano grind out second round cues on Thursday. I'm off. Feeling. Come on, Johnny. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Could be stuff of absolute fairy tales. Green and gold. Six two, six four five two down. This is literally right where he wants him. Come on, mate. I'd be crying right now. <laughs> if you were Johnny. Yeah, but you know it's your last yeah. match ever. Yeah, it could be three points away from never ever playing another match. Imagine you finish on the double. Don't <laughs> 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 sign in for a future next week. <laughs> Play one point, then just call it. Surely you're getting him like a bit of a presentation. Uh, just on Chapel Street. Yeah. See so qualifying tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Pottergill. What are you thinking? Are you gonna just should we pull out? Should we pull out and just work on a few things? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't know, I, just, I feel like doing ball fed around the middle of the day is good, and that's what I'm playing, so I think I'll just pull out. Yeah, I sent an email to Craig, so... I imagine that'll be the best option to think long-term. Yeah. Pull out and just get ready for Bernie. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going. One of the best parts of the day. Second best part today. Second best part of the day, apart from when Dana hits another dive volley winner on match point, is going to be this morning coffee. Large flat light, two shots, thanks for coming.
large. Yeah, actually, I've the eyelids full capacity. The engine ticking. Just prioritizing my convenience over the environment. <laughs> so tough when the food's just so shit here like look at this look what we have to deal with tough so bad don't know how we get through it honestly another day another dollar nice beautiful day that's it that's the battleground today just there Yep, nice. Good contact there, right, right there. Perfect. Yep. You're drilling that. When I was last round qualies, I was probably feeling the same as I had for every qualifying match. The nerves were obviously there, but they weren't they weren't too drastic. I don't know if that was because I was just like just really happy to be in the last round of qualies, or um, but yeah, they weren't they weren't too too bad. They definitely came came a lot in the match, but yeah, before I was just super amped to get out there and and and, uh, and compete. Work cut out for him this afternoon, Fitzy. Well, I think I think I've just been really really enjoying the competitiveness on the court which may be something I've lacked consistency with in the past. Um, I've maybe had more more worry and doubt in the past about how I'm going to hit the ball or how I'm going to play but th this week I've been just super keen to get out there and just compete. Sensational. Retrieval skills of the highest order from Dane Sweeney. And fight my ass off and probably because it's Aussie Open and there's you know, this crowd and it's just rally and I'm playing where it's but yeah I wasn't wasn't feeling too out of the ordinary um, I was feeling I was feeling pretty good before I walked out two Obviously there was a stage in the match where you were just trying to kind of hang on and make a lot of balls and keep him out there for as long as possible, trying to almost hope his level was dropping off or could drop off because he was, he was playing at a really high level. How has that changed compared to uh, 20 minutes later where he started cramping and then it was almost a match that was uh, down a set and on serve but you felt like you were about to shake hands with a victory. Yeah, um, I felt like I was, yeah, I was doing well to stay with him. I felt like we played a really high level first set and um, yeah, you got the better of me. I felt like, I felt like he was a better player to be honest and I just did a great job just to, just to hang around and to, to make him, to make him work or keep him out there. And uh, I actually had no idea that he was um, that he was struggling uh, mentally. Uh, sorry, physically. Uh, it was extremely weird. I, I thought I was just doing a great job to maybe make him serve out the match, and then all of a sudden, at, at four three, I saw he couldn't even move. So I went from I went from I hope I can just make this guy serve the match to oh my god, like I I have the match right in my hands now. So it was extremely weird, and extremely weird situation, especially in such a big moment and big match like this. Um, but yeah, I, did, I think I did really, really well. I got tight and missed a couple real easy shots, but I think I did pretty well to handle the situation. And uh, yeah, it was good enough in the end. And um, I felt super bad for Zizi. He was, he was absolutely gutted at the net. Gave him a big hug and, uh, and I felt so bad for him. But um, I, I walked away the winner, so I can't be too unhappy. <laughs> Your first Grand Slam major. How are you feeling? Oh, pretty relieved and excited. I'm just super happy to be able to play main drill, best of five sets. I only played that once in my life against Max Purcell actually. He was down six love, six love, three love, and uh, ended up getting six four on the third down. Um, but I honestly just super happy with my week, and yeah, I'm not sure if it just hasn't hit me yet, but it doesn't, hasn't really changed anything, anything too much. Feeling obviously really happy with how I've been playing, and um, obviously qualifying, so it's great. Um, but 
then again, I'm, I'm really just focused on the next match now. Um, get to have my family and friends all come down and watch me play main draw, so that's going to be an absolutely awesome experience. Get to play on John Kane against Serendulo, who's a, who's a great player, world-class player, so it's a, another opportunity to test my skills against some of the world's best. I feel like I'm playing a bloody future with this guy hanging his clothes up. Yep. First time main draw. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. Still get the clothes dry. Grassroots. Grassroots, mate. Humble beginnings. What they, <laughs> is that what they say? Humble beginnings, arrogant endings. Arrogant endings, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I want to watch this. Come on, mate. Under pressure, what do you got? Time is a wow. drum. It's new pressure. balls and 35 degrees. My racket's strung at 50 pounds. I'm trying to loosen my grip tension right now. I just can't find that nice middle ground where I'm trying to kind of guide it and get it in. Grip tension's tight. Not fully following through because the ball's flying off my strings. Zizzyberg is just roping it. You cannot control it. What do I do? What do I do? Say something, Dad. Say something. <laughs> uh, snap my racket over my shoe. Change it. Nah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, man, you can't take video. You can't take video? No. Uh, yeah, I can't even change my... Uh, yeah. Sir, look at this. I see how bent my arm is. I didn't even like... It's... Have you just been trying to promote that being loose and now it's just gone that bad? Uh, I've never tried to get it... Um, I've never tried to get it bent, but I feel like... Up this point, I want to try and... Straight the left arm. Because then I can get more of a peck stretch and it's going to keep me up for longer. But if my arm's bent... I feel like yeah, there's no, it's not as good as good as much peck stretch, and I can't really use this to keep me up. And a lot of my serves are from if I miss, it's from collapsing a bit early. Yeah, I think I need to get straight in that left arm up this time. I'll try and yeah. work on it a little bit. 